All right, guys, look, we're back. And guys, look, this is Quentin. Quentin, this guys, Quentin has a lot of things that he would like for us to help him with. So that's why we all are here to help Quentin. Now. All right, boys and girls, we're going to go ahead and grab that comb. And I started off using the wrong side of the comb. I didn't go straight to white teeth. And when you don't go straight to white teeth and you're trying to fluff up 360 waves, you're going to quickly find out, especially if they've been woofing, that it's not the easiest way to run the comb through and inflate the waves. Bring them out. Fluff them up. And after I fluff them out, we're going to grab the number two guard. And, uh, you know, the reason I brought out the number two guard first, and this was, this was after I had the consultation with Quentin, he couldn't stress enough that he wanted to make sure that the crown area, which is thin, because, again, you know, we, we, we have a few things that we have to consider as we cut Quentin, boys and girls. He is not only thin around the crown, but he's also thin around the front of his head. And because of that, I have to analyze and take in consideration that, okay, this is all about tones for me. I know that by keeping certain areas longer, it's gonna maintain a certain shade, a certain appearance that we have to give him. Now, I'm not gonna run any guards through that front area. I'm not, I'm gonna cut all around it. And it doesn't matter that that thin hair in the front, it doesn't matter that it's long. It doesn't matter that it looks a little off right now. I'm gonna get to the reason why soon. But while I'm prepping up for the taper, Quentin, talk to me, bro. What do you want to do with the with the beard? You can bring this down some, but it's like far as the length down here. You want to bring it down? Yeah, oh, yeah, a little bit. It's, it's too much of my cheek. Mm -hmm. Nah, never mind. You want to keep a C cup? Yeah. yeah. Or what you think? What you, okay, so awesome. if we go a little bit higher, it takes away from what you got going on on top. Well, how high was you going to do it? Now guys, I wanna explain one thing to you. When I was talking to Quentin about what he wanted to do with his beard, I felt he wasn't 100% sure with what he wanted to do with his beard. And at the end, he kind of pretty much like left it up to me. It, it was in the air. I, I pretty much got the feeling that he was gonna be willing to let me do what I felt was gonna pretty much make him look the best, but also it was in the air. So always prep yourself up for that. Like, I mean, if a client gives you the freedom to kind of give the haircut your own flavor take it but if you sense that the clients are not 100 percent sure that that's what they want to go with how do i say this manage the expectations because i feel like when we give our all to a haircut and eventually it gets to the point that maybe they, the, the client changes their mind we be in our feelings a little bit i'm not gonna lie but that's not important right now we'll get to that when we get to it I cannot stress this enough to you. Guys, we have to take away the attention that Quentin is getting in the light areas. When Quentin grows it out long, those light areas are more noticeable. As we have brought the length down completely throughout his whole head, we have to bring it down even more on the sides of his head so when people look at him, the front profile, they don't notice the light areas as much. That is what I'm keeping in mind as I'm doing this haircut because shades do matter. Lightness to darkness does matter. And as we are continuing to figure out how best to use that foundation for his appearance, we're gonna also use it towards his beard. That was a great segue, damn it. Hey. Now we're gonna go, go ahead and continue the same steps that we did on the previous uh, section, but even though I didn't really explain what the heck I just did on the previous section, let's go ahead and explain it on this section. I grab the number two guard, guys. I, oh, I always start with the lever open and I continue that same step on the beard. I'm trying to basically do a two-on-one special on this right now, Quentin, so just follow me. And after I do that, I go ahead and open the blade up and I'm using these ergos, right? The ergos are pretty cool. I'm liking it. I love the way it's, it feels on the hand sometimes I'm getting a little bored so I'm, I'm a little excited to get some new clippers soon next month I'm going to the CT Barber Expo so if you're going I'm gonna be there okay but after all this that I'm talking about I'm using the number one guard to continue the steps I went from a two to a one and a half 
to now a one. And I always start with the lever open, just like how I did it with the two, how I did it with the one and a half, and then I close it up. The only time I don't do straight close to open or open to close is when I'm using the blade open. When it's just the blade, no guard, that's when I go from closed halfway to open or vice versa because there's a lot of shading to do when you're dealing with the blade all the way open. There's a lot of detail to be done within that section. But speaking of detail, if you want a more like slower version of what I'm doing right now, more detailed version where I get to interact with you and if you want to ask me any questions, you can. So make sure you follow me on the Tomb 45 Academy. I'm there and a whole bunch of other educators are there. So we'll see you there. This is the whole shebang of the show right here. Not the whole shebang, but this is a big shebang. And the reason it's a shebang is because this is what's gonna bring a lot of the haircut, the service together, boys and girls. We're gonna lay the hair down. Remember how I left certain areas a little bit longer? This is where it's gonna make sense. We're gonna lay it down with some setting foam, some setting lotion. There's a lot of different companies. I don't have a preference. Just go and get you some, lay it down with a firm, no, not firm. About a medium to soft bristle brush. I would go with like a medium. Um, if you want to go with a very cheap brush, you can, but just don't, just make sure you don't hurt your client, okay? Make sure that the brush is soft. If you don't know, try it on yourself. If it hurts you, it's not for your client, okay? And Quentin, I'm pretty sure Quentin will vouch for me that it didn't hurt. And if it did, Quentin, don't, don't let me know. I'm playing, you can let me know. But look, after I grabbed the do-rag and a wave cap, I made sure that I'm just, I'm just kind of like using my hand and using the same type of direction to make sure that everything was just moving forward. Oh, and I didn't mention this before, but after you use the brush, there's times that the hair looks like it's poking, well, it's not that it looks, it's poking out. You wanna use some of that setting lotion, put it in your hand and just lay it down a little bit more. And after you lay it down, Put the do-rag on, put the cap on, put the client, AKA Quentin, under the hooded dryer for a few minutes, probably 10, hot, medium, cold. Take the do-rag off and this is what we have. Look at that, laid, laid. The shades are more even and that's what we want. That's what Quentin wants, but can Quentin tell? No, he's blind. No, he's not blind, but you know, he wears, he wears glasses. Now in the past guys, I've been guilty myself of just relying on my two eyes, of looking directly at my client, AKA you Quentin, and thinking that that's enough. Well, maybe not you Quentin, now that I think about it, but Quentin, by the time you came in, I was ready. And I have to look at the mirror as I edge up Quentin. I'm not just looking at Quentin directly, I'm edging him up, I'm looking back at the mirror, and I'm going back and attacking the areas that I feel need to be refined, detailed. And look, there, there were certain areas in particular, the corner, that corner right there had a hair that was just, it was just like a curl that was kind of making it seem less sharp around the vertical angles. Like, you know how annoying it is when you're just like, one side is sharp, just two sharp lines, just 
mm, right there and the other side is like a little bit softer because it looks slightly round and that's what I was you know battling with but at the end it doesn't matter I got it but now we're on this beard now with the beard I grab a short pick I used to be using the, the that long pick that kind of comes out don't use that unless you're just dealing with a big afro you want to use a short pick because that long pick can actually stab your client because if your if your pick is like longer than this you're gonna go start picking and it's gonna stab them right there you don't want to stab your client right there you can actually hurt them so go ahead and get you a short pick and after you pick the the beard out you'll be able to see the areas that you got to cover i know that i'm going to shape it up but i'm not going to shape it up just yet and when i say shape up i mean the the beard i'm going to shape up the lineup i'm going to work on the lineup first with the trimmers just to kind of set the foundation for the razor blade the razor blade is where you're going to get that nice finished look you're never going to get that or should i say you're not going to get as good of a finish with the trimmers you can get close but it's just not the razor guys so don't shy away if you haven't if you haven't been using the razor I mean, I, psst, use the razor don't shy away from the razor if you're if you're afraid of using the razor on somebody use it on yourself for cutting hair guys for cutting hair now afterwards guys we're gonna go ahead and go back to this beard after we lined the you know the foundation of the beard up gonna shape it up uh, I tilted him back I don't always do it for all my clients it just depends on how the the beard needs to be shaped his beard was pretty long so you know I just made sure he was like comfortable and I started creating the shape I knew I had to work on shaping the bottom a lot and working on shaping the bottom of a long beard is super super difficult if you don't tilt the head back their neck is gonna hurt okay and some clients they got big big old just heads and small necks and you know you, you know that's not enough support there guys let's help our clients out with the small necks and let's recline them all let's not even just look out for the small necks let's look out for everybody and not make them go through some pain in the service you want to relax quentin you want to relax man let's just relax a little bit let me do my thing look you got a lot going on right now. We're rossing it out. The shape of this beard is nice. The silhouette is there. And I'm just thinking to myself, as I'm lining you up, Quentin, I realize, damn, what if you don't want this type of lineup? Because you were a little unsure. Maybe you're not going to want it. Dang, I'm working really hard for this right now. It's all right, Fonz. It's all right. Calm down, though. Calm down. We're going we're gonna to get it right. We're going to get it right. Let's stay positive. Let's hope that Quentin, in the end, wants this look. But till we get to that, we got to work on this color enhancement. Right now, I'm using the Beam Team Machine and the Sean Cuts Hair Clutch Card. And this right here is the trifecta. I'm using also the No Drip, by the way. I just looked at my face. Could you? Outside, John? You wanna drop it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to meet up at the lip, man. I don't like that. So you want it down to the lip right here? Mm -hmm. Meet in the corner, like a square, drop it straight down. Yeah. Well, guys, it happened. He wasn't happy with the initial first lineup. Boys and girls, we have been here plenty of times. Not in this channel, I'm just talking about in life, in the barbershop, cutting clients. We have been here before, where the client, in the end, just doesn't want that finished product or doesn't want that one thing about the finished product because it's not like he didn't like everything else. He just didn't like how high up the lineup was. So it's cool. Even if I did have somebody waiting on me, which I didn't, I would still fix it. Don't you dare. Don't you dare say no. When it's a situation like this, Quentin just wants me to bring the lineup down. 
if it was a whole new haircut that he wanted, it would have been different. Well, I mean, I would have done it for the video, for you guys. But in, in real life, in the grind of the barbershop, that's a separate conversation that uh, that maybe we'll have in this channel one day. But I am just going to go ahead and bring the lineup down. It's cool. No worries. Was I a little upset? I'm not going to lie. I preferred the high lineup. I don't know. What do y'all think? I don't even know how to say this. I mean, look at how Quentin used to look. Shout out to Quentin for stopping by and taking advantage of not only spending time with family, but coming down and seeing us, spending time with us. It was a great opportunity to just create another experience. That's the biggest thing I can leave with you guys. Don't always just make it about the cut, make it about the experience, connect with your clients. All around, I had a blast. I liked the cut. If you haven't liked this video, make sure you like this video. If you're not subscribed, make sure you subscribe. And make sure you show Quentin some love on the comment section.